All right, next guest, head football coach at Michigan State, one of the busiest men on the planet, as all college football coaches are. Jonathan Smith joins us next here on The Ticket. Coach, how are you? Yeah, doing well, describing it well. It's busy, but uh, always an exciting day to get to the the finish line here on signing day. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, I guess we could start there, is just the current state of college football. I mean, add to the list, you take a new job. You're trying to figure out who's on the roster. You're trying to preserve that roster. You're trying to recruit high school players, recruit the portal, handle NIL, uh, and move a family across country. So, like, take me inside the time management in a 24-hour period uh, under those circumstances. Yeah, you're not sleeping much. I know that. Uh, we did dive in and attack it to start with the current roster, man, getting to know these guys, uh, selling a vision, telling them how we're moving forward, what's, what it's going to be looking like, and, and really inviting them to – to jump on board and trust us and dive into this thing. And so we did approach it that way, the priority of retaining and, and getting to know the, the current roster. I really it took about a week and a half doing it. Even, the, you know, the first week we're here is dead period, so you know, it was easier because you're not on the road recruiting. First day we could get out was Friday, went out in Detroit and saw Nick Marsh, but and that was great. Uh, but even the next week, when it was all it was open recruiting, we spent mornings trying to get one on one with guys on this roster, and then driving or flying to a home visit that night. We wanted that approach if it starts with the current roster. Well, it's funny that you talk about that. Like when you walked in, did you have to sell the current team? And you know, are you recruiting the guys that are already in the portal to try to come back? Like what what is that style? Like how are you trying to, I guess, keep this team together with the players that you want to? to remain at Michigan State. Yeah, I think there's a balance. I mean, just explaining, these guys have been through a lot this last year. Uh, college football landscape now, they have opportunities if they want to go explore their options. And, and that's not specific just to Michigan State. That's going across the country. And so uh, coming in and just talking about a vision and how we want to do things and just telling my story of how I got to be in East Lansing and how excited I am about this job. And so – those were the conversations. And then look, when there's coaching changes and different experiences, maybe the fit isn't the best here for some guys, some guys to stay, uh, but wanted to be at least have conversations with those guys. Um, and so we'll lose some. We've gotten some back. We're definitely looking forward to adding to the roster through you know, high school recruiting and the portal uh, ourselves and getting started in January. Coach, let's go back to you're at Oregon State. What was the process like and and – for Michigan State recruiting you to come to be their head coach. And, and when was that moment where you walked in the kitchen and said, you know what, honey, I think we're going to pack our bags and move from Corvallis to East Lansing? Yeah, it was late in the season when uh, conversations began. Um, and, you know, really appreciate Alan and his approach and how professional it was because it was not, you know, well-known or publicized uh, just a couple of times we talked. Um, again, you know, that place, Oregon State, unique to me, special to me in a lot of ways. And so this was not an easy decision. Wanted to get to the, to the end, of season, end of the season to make a final, final call and got toward the end of the season, had one more night of sleep to think about it and, and made the decision. Uh, Jonathan Smith joining us, head coach, Michigan State. You know, Rico and I are huge college football guys, so very familiar with your time at OSU. And just you built it ground up. You took over a program you had to build ground up. You come to Michigan State. How does it differ when you're trying to now, okay, I don't need to completely tear this thing all the way down. I have some pieces to work with here. How does it differ, especially with the changes in the sport and now – you know, the Wild West of NIL and Portal, et cetera, kind of compare and contrast the two rebuilds. Yeah, quite a bit different. I mean, six years ago, got got to Oregon State and, you know, we'll start with, starting with myself, first time head coach, right? I learned a bunch through those six years. Um, but when we were beginning that rebuild six years ago, yeah, NIL wasn't in vogue. I mean, the transfer portal wasn't in place. And so now, fast forward six years coming over here, and you're right, there's, there's current good, really good players on this roster trying to keep those guys around some good, good young talent. Um, I think Michigan State, in the recent, uh, recently, have won double digit wins just three years ago. So this thing has been going uh, established tradition that you can win here and do some stuff. And then, unique to the time and place of college football, you can add to your roster pretty quickly through the portal, um, and so they're totally different times six years ago compared to now. Do you like the changes? I mean, I know a lot of coaches have, have big opinions on it. I just haven't heard yours. Are, are, do you like the, the more aggressive approach and different avenues to building a roster, or did you prefer the old-school way? 
Well, you know, I think there's a back and forth on I, – I'd like a little bit more structure on it. I do think the opportunity – for players currently to change their environment. I think there's some good to that. I mean, coaches can do it, right? That's exactly what I did three weeks ago of, you know, trying a new opportunity. And so allowing the players to do that, I think, because the environments do change, right? Coaches has to change. And, and even initially, right, maybe a player is at a, a university and maybe he's not going to play there. Maybe it's the wrong fit, level, whatnot. He can hop in the portal and, and find a better opportunity for him. So I don't – I think there are some good things. I just think some of the structure, just the calendar in general, this this month is a lot going on with the portal still being open for this month, early signing day, coaching changes taking place. Uh, taking a look at just even the calendar for some of these would be good. Michigan State head coach Jonathan Smith joining us. And, Coach, it's funny you talk about how you are kind of – you transferred in too. Why did you want this Michigan State job? What was the selling point? Yeah, I just a lot of it just a fit in regards to, you know, the, learning about the community, the town. Uh, excited about the conference, the style of play we want to want to play. I think you can do it here at uh, Michigan State in regards to physicality and earning some things. Place of development. Uh, pride ourselves as a staff. We want to be a place of development. Um, excited about the conference in regards to I think one of the best conferences in the country, um, and so all of that was a it was an adventure, a challenge, an opportunity. I wanted to to take on so three years from now jonathan smith football at michigan state would be what yeah i think we've got established identity three years from now i want to be staying consistent to an approach and guys getting improvement developments taking place obviously yeah we're looking for the scoreboard to be our way um at that but it starts with your process consistency approach continuity identity that's established Coach, one thing, and I, I know you've probably been asked by a million people, so apologies in advance, but like you, you, you came from a place that had a huge in-state rivalry. The Civil War was a, a huge deal with OSU and Oregon. Have you had any time, I'm sure people have come up and give you their opinions, but any time to wrap your mind around the rivalry with Michigan here and just how important it is to the school, its alums, fans, et cetera? Yeah, I'm excited about it because, you know, you go back to the fit. Yes, I've been a part of in-state rivalries, and this one is another one. Um, and so I'd, I think that's a great part of college football. This thing means a ton, and I'm fired up to be be a part of it. Coach, uh, question. You guys hit the ground running. You brought in your new staff. What were the challenges of trying to blanket the state of Michigan and Ohio within the last three weeks? Yeah, it's challenging because there's just a limited amount of time, and there was a lot uh, to go on. On just like you mentioned, we're still you know hiring a defensive coordinator, which I think we we locked in a really good one with Joe Rossi. But that took you know approach time, a lot of phone calls, getting face to face, a lot of interest in the job. So that was a balancing act. Didn't allow for just constant travel in and out of high schools. Already mentioned wanting to start with the current roster, spend time with those guys. That limits your time to get out and about. Um, again, the intention, and we will. We got the opportunity in January to get out and about more locally in the state, in the state of Ohio, because we want to make some huge inroads there. Well, Coach, why Joe Rossi? Why that defensive coordinator? Well, it started with you know just been proven in this league, played at a high level for a long period of time, five six years of of doing it. So that that jumped off the page to me. Personality fit, being able to talk to Joe a few times. I think a lot of philosophical things we're aligned with in regards to development, teamwork, doing it together, make the game physical. And so the more I got to talk with him and then looking at the resume, uh, I thought it was a really good hire. So uh, one, one thing to me, too, is, is look, obviously conferences are changing. Things are so different. One, one thing for Michigan State, and obviously Rico and I are both alums and we've talked about it, was the old divisional structure versus now – no more divisions. You know, as you enter the conference along with the other four Pac-12 teams, like when you look at the the where college football is going and kind of what you're into now, I mean, do you view this kind of like opportunity that now, all right, no divisions, it's it's more of an even playing field. You know, is that exciting? Is that something you're for? Or, or do you think there's more changes on the horizon here? Yeah, I'm definitely excited about, you know, just again, the 18 teams in this league, the national brands, so many of them, you know, the long history of big time football, big time players, big time coaches, and so being a part of that. Uh, I do like the idea of, you know, the best two are going to play in the championship game, those that earn it. And so right. being able to, to do that and not separate, but you know, by divisions makes sense to me. Michigan State head coach Jonathan Smith joining us here in. 
Coach, um, when you got to Michigan State, you walked into an empty quarterback room. You you replaced them with two guys that we can talk about today, but what's that room going to look like come spring? Yeah, definitely looking to get three guys here for January and confident and excited about getting that, that third edition. Uh, did like the idea of getting a, a couple high schoolers with talent, and so getting Alessio in here and Rylan uh, was a guy that we'd known for a while. I think both those guys can play at this level, throw it all over the yard, have some athleticism, and an eager to learn. Both of them love football, and then looking for an older, more ex- more experienced player to add to that room. So I feel good where we're going to be at in the beginning of January. Yeah, one one note too, and I, I don't want to go too into the weeds because I know I'll I'll lose the people because Rico and I could nerd out on this stuff. But like one thing MSU has struggled with is really developing an offensive line. For us, it's been years. It's been your calling card at Oregon State. You have one of the best offensive line coaches in America. Like how long? I know the portal's available in high school and all. How long does it take in your mind to develop what you built at Oregon State? and have that that brute force up front that you were able to incredibly do out there in Corvallis. Yeah, well, we're not very patient. Obviously, you know, things <laughs> take some time and, and all that. We do want to be a place of development sometimes. A high school player needs a couple of years to get that type of strength and, and things. The portal has a opportunity to add. I think there's current players here with a big-time offseason and spend some time, not just with the old line coach, but the offensive philosophy, the defense, or the, the team approach of making the thing physical and anxious to start working with these guys because we do i think this game starts up front best teams win the line of scrimmage and we want to be in that conversation coach i've noticed a lot of different players and the edits that came out today and now all the photos they're wearing the black uniforms is this going to be a staple are you rebranding michigan state well, we're definitely recruiting, and so those guys got the option, right? What 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 jersey they color they want to put on when we're here, and so it just looks like out of these recruits, maybe black was a little bit more popular. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty sharp. Listen, best of luck to you. Appreciate. Oh, wait, the time. wait, wait, Mike. Go ahead. What? Hey, this is for Mike because what? he has been following Oregon State football for years. He hit, he hit me on to you guys years ago, Coach. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to bring the chainsaw, the turnover chainsaw? <laughs> we can repaint it green and white. We can make it happen. Right. No, that, that, that's, that's a fit for that place, and that was a bunch of fun, and I'm sure we'll come up with something over here that's uh, unique and authentic to this place. Listen, we appreciate a few minutes of your time. Know you're super busy. Hopefully you can get a little rest, enjoy the holidays, and then back at it. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Merry All Christmas. Right. You right, got thanks, it. Man. Same to you. That's head coach Jonathan Smith, Michigan State. Yeah, oh, I would love the turnover chainsaw. Amazing. I, I mean, you you have <laughs> been to Oregon State for years. So. Listen, you know who his uh, you know who his two receivers were. Chad Johnson on one side. Oh, and TJ Hushmanzada on the other. He was the QB. Oh, yeah. You know who the running back was? Who? Remember Ken Simonton? Is there anything you don't know? Oh, I'm just shooting you straight. It no, was, I'm just like, wow. That was the team that bombed Notre Dame in the Orange No, no, ball. I remember the TJ Hoosman and Chad Johnson. I didn't yep. realize he was a QB. Yep. Number nine, I think. Oh. All right. I told you. Yeah, I didn't want to nerd out. Um, People but, love when you nerd out. Well, it's fun. I mean, it, it goes back to when college football was like real and not whatever you've turned it to with your TV executive <laughs> friends. Um, all I right. wish I got some money from <laughs> that. <laughs> tell, tell them something, will you?